is a new season for us. Number one, in this new season, we are on a rescue mission that will require us to bring them in. Both men, both women, both children, men, women, and children who are broken. Men, women, and children who are wounded. Men, women, and children who are afflicted, who are rejected. We will not only bring them in, but we will also clean them up. We will not only clean them up, but we will also build them up. We will not only build them up, but we will also send them out as witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What I am saying to you at this very day, that Pefa Church Donholm, this year we will carry out evangelism like we have never carried evangelism before in the mighty name of Jesus. We will bring them in. We will clean them up. We will build them up. We will send them out as witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now you need to understand the reason why we must send them out. They must go back where they were engaging. They must go back where they were drinking. They must go back where they used to do immorality. When they see the transformation in their lives, they will believe in our God. Praise the name of the Lord. It is a new season for us in the mighty name of Jesus. I gave you the scriptures. Number one, Habakkuk 3, 2. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to number 16. Matthew Chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. And then Matthew chapter 9, verse number 37. Now I want you to understand that we must bring them in. You might say to me, man of God, I don't know how to bring them in. That's okay. But you can clean them up. You might say, I don't know how to clean them up. That's okay. But you can build them up. So I am challenging every member of Pefa Church Don Home that we must engage in this process. Why? Because it is a prophetic declaration to us that we must bring them in. Now I want you to think for a minute what would have happened if somebody did not take time to evangelize to you, to witness Christ to you. You would still be in that bar drinking. You would still be that womanizer. You will still be that reckless, loose girl. But because somebody took that opportunity, he took that time to get out of his comfort zone or her comfort zone, and he brought you in, and you encountered Jesus. I decree and declare every spirit of intimidation that may lay on our heads, to cause us not to bring them in. In the mighty name of Jesus, may it die by the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. We must bring them in. We must clean them up. We must build them up. We must send them out as witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell them, bring them in. I say, turn to somebody and tell them, bring them in. Turn to somebody else, if he's not louder, turn to him and tell them, hashtag, bring them in. Hashtag, bring them in. I said, bring them in. I said, bring them in. I said, clean them up. I said, build them up and send them out as witnesses of our Lord and Savior. Uh, Jesus Christ. Number two. Now I want you to hear this. When we make declarations, don't care what your brother says or your sister says. It's about you. So I want your faith to connect with my faith. And when you say amen, you are actually saying in the spiritual, let it be so in my life. So shout loud 
as a voice of thunder as I make this declaration because it is happening in the spiritual and as we say amen it begins to move and activate even in the natural in the mighty name of Jesus number two the Lord spoke to me and said this is your season of supernatural turnaround I said this is a season of supernatural turnaround the heavens are open over you, over you and over your household. I said the heavens are open over you and your household. Amen. Everything is turning in your favor. I said everything is turning around for your favor. Amen. You are blessed and highly favored with what money can buy and what money cannot buy. I want to say that again. You are blessed and highly favored with what money can buy and what money cannot buy. If I decree and declare to somebody today, right now, receive good health in Jesus' name. I decree and declare, receive peace of mind in Jesus' name. Those who are believing God for our spouse, receive your spouse in the mighty name of Jesus. I say those who are believing God for our spouse, receive your spouse in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are married and you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, receive that child in the name of Jesus. I said you are blessed and highly favored with what money can buy and what money cannot buy. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I am blessed and highly favored. I want you to, I want you to, as you walk out of this place, don't walk like a defeated man. Don't walk like a cast man. If I be your father, I am declaring in Jesus' name, every curse is broken. As your father, I declare you are blessed and highly favored with what money can buy and what money cannot buy. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. I am blessed and highly Favor. This is your season. Number three. No forces of wickedness shall delay your blessing in this new season. I said no forces of wickedness. Hey, Kadabo Kasha. Will delay your blessing in this new season. Some of you, your names have been spoken in witch doctor's dens. In wizard coverts. But I am declaring from this altar, no forces of wickedness shall delay your blessing in this new season. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not be a burden to men. In your family, they always talk about you because you are a burden. I'm saying in this new season, you will not be a burden to men. You will not be a burden to men. You will not be a slave of men. Many of us, we are slaves to men. Why? Because we owe them money. The one who pays the piper determines the tune. And there are some of us, I want to say this, under the anointing, you are not living your life. It is your brother or your sister who controls you. Why? Because he pays the school fees of your children. When, he's, when they say jump, you say how high? Why? Because they take care of you. I came to prophesy to somebody today. It is a new season for you in the name of Jesus. I said it is a new season for you in the name of Jesus. I declare jubilee in the area of your finances. 
I don't know if you understand what I said. Jubilee was a time of debt cancellation. I decree and declare Jubilee in your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. You will lend to many nations, but you will be a servant of none in the mighty name of Jesus. I said you will lend to many nations and you will be a servant to none in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse number 6. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse number 6. Number 4. Pepha Church, don't know our voice will be amplified and heard in our generation. I my good day, Cassie. I say, Pepha Church, don't know. Our voice will be amplified and will be heard in our generation. What that basically means, who is Pepha Church, don't know. Uh, who is Pepha Church, don't know. Uh, who is Pepha Church, don't know. What that basically means, your voice will be heard in your generation. Your voice will be amplified and will be heard in your generation. That is what God is saying. Your voice will be amplified and will be heard in your generation. If you believe in Sarah, hallelujah. My voice will be amplified this year. My voice will be heard in my generation. I will not die like an obscure man. I will not die like an obscure man. Why? Because my voice will be amplified and will be heard in my generation. If you believe it's our hallelujah. I decree and declare the year 2023 is the beginning for supernatural increase in favor, supernatural increase in might, supernatural increase in number, supernatural increase in resources. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We went to Mombasa for holiday in Diani. And uh, when we were walking at the beach, we, we found one of the Maasai guys. I was walking on the beach with my wife. Thank God that now my kids are, are teenagers. So you cannot control teenagers. So you leave teenagers to be teenagers. So I was just walking with my wife. You're getting a good time. And uh, uh, thank God for wives who can bless you. you. You see why I'm putting on this is because I was given by my wife, you know? Yeah, bought by my wife. <laughs> Let me tell you, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. I declare to somebody today, may you receive your favor in Jesus' name. Ha, ka, ka, ka. So we got this Maasai man. And uh, he had some branding on the face. And so my wife said, what is this? And so this Maasai man said, this is, it's a tattoo, it is a mark, it is a brand. When we were children, uh, people would come and steal the kids. So I had, I got this brand from our, from our clan, so that if I get lost, they would know which clan I come from. I came to tell somebody today, in the year 2023, God has branded you with favor. Come on. <laughs> it is a permanent mark that every man will see, every woman will see. You are branded by favor. I decree and declare supernatural favor. I decree and declare supernatural might. I decree and declare supernatural resources. I decree and declare supernatural increase in number. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. I am branded with favor. I said I am branded with favor. Listen to me, whether you like it or not, I must succeed. Why? Because I am a carrier of favor. 
Abraham went into the desert, but because he was a carrier of favor, the desert had to yield on his behalf. I decree and declare your desert this year must yield on your behalf. Why? You are a carrier. I say, you are a carrier. You are a carrier. You are a carrier of favor. Numbers, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 9. And then 1 Kings chapter 2, verse number 3. Number 5, no more spiritual dryness in your life and in your ministry. I said no more spiritual dryness in your life and in your ministry. God is ushering you into a supernatural freshness beginning now in the name of Jesus. God is ushering you into supernatural freshness in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. When the children of Israel were in the desert, they never ate stale food. The Lord told them, you must speak what you can eat. For now, freshness. I said freshness. My God is not a God of stale things. Let the things of 2022 bid them goodbye. They are stale. He's a God of freshness. And I declare to you in the mighty name of Jesus, may freshness invade your life. In your family, freshness. In your business, freshness. In your place of work, freshness. In the life of your children who have been struggling in school, I declare freshness. And beginning now in Jesus' name. Let me give you a scripture quickly. John chapter 15 verse number 5. And Mark chapter 2 verse number 22. Lay your hands on the, the head of your kids and tell them, listen to me. My son, my daughter, you have no choice because I release freshness in your mind. I release good ideas in your mind. I release success in your mind. You will never be beneath, you will be above. Yes, yes, freshness in the name of Jesus. Freshness. I, I, I am prophesying to somebody, when you go back to your workplace, you, 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 your manager will wonder, where, uh, how comes I never noticed you? There is something different about you in this year. It's because freshness is falling upon you now in Jesus' name. Receive it now. Receive it. Up there, receive it. Up there, receive it. Down here, receive it now. In Jesus' name. Number six, we are almost there. And this year, 2023, you must refuse to be defeated. Ha! Bakashakada bakada. Our father said that as much as it is a new season, there are battles you must fight. Not me. You must fight. I must fight. So don't be afraid of battles. Now let me tell you, when I know I am going into the battlefield and I am already the winner, why should I be afraid? You get anxious when you get into the field and you don't know if I will win or I will lose. I am declaring to you in the year 2023, you must refuse to be defeated in Jesus' name. <laughs> refuse to be defeated in Jesus' name. I said refuse to be defeated in Jesus' name. Everything you will put in your hands to do, you must finish in Jesus' name. I said you must finish in Jesus' name. 
everything you put your hands to do, you must finish in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that you shall, you shall remain unchallenged until you finish your project. Nobody will challenge you until you finish your project. I said nobody. I said nobody. I said nobody. No situation, no circumstance will challenge you, will challenge your life until you finish your project in Jesus' name. Therefore, church, don't know my declare to you as the servant of God over your life. The Lord assured me that if we build him a sanctuary, which we are going to do this year, he said that he will build us our homes. And for those who have homes, the Lord said he will give you property. If you have property, I mean, it doesn't hurt to get another one. I said it does not hurt to get another one. So if you are here, listen to me. Listen to me and listen to me clear. At the beginning of the year, there are three things that must happen. There is prophetic prayer. There is prophetic word. And there is prophetic giving. And as a church, we, have, we started a culture. This is going to be the third year. On, on the month of March, first Sunday is our first fruit. So we are going to dedicate our first fruit fully to invest resources to build God a sanctuary. And the Lord said, as we build him a sanctuary, he will build us a home. Now watch this. David got all the resources needed to build the temple. And he asked God, I want to build you a temple. But God said, no. Because your hands are filled with blood. My point is very clear. It is an honor and not a right to build God his sanctuary. Because David wanted to, but God said, no. So for you to be given an opportunity to build God a house, it is an honor and a privilege. When we are long gone, our children will be in, the, in that church. When we are long gone, our, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will still be in that church. What an honor and a privilege to invest in the house of God. I decree and declare that the men who will suck Sacrifice. I, I'm not saying offering. I'm saying sacrifice. Sacrifice is your life. Something that will cost you everything. You are Isaac, not your Ishmael. Those who are going to sacrifice, I want to declare to you. God will build you your home or God will give you a property. Receive it now in Jesus' name. I said receive it now in Jesus' name. I said receive it now in Jesus' name. Let me give you scriptures. Exodus 4, 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. Genesis 39, verse 3. And then 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 11. If you've never owned property, I'm telling you this is the year to own property. This is the year. If you've never owned property, I'm telling you, this is the year to own property. This is the year. Because we are entering into a new season. I'll tell you, Poverty does not glorify God. That's why he came. And he became why? Poor. So that we can become what? Rich. And I'll tell you here, it is not easy to lead poor people. I don't want to be a pastor of poor people. I don't. And that's why I'm praying and I'm believing God that in this new season, God must take you from one level to another. Amen. I mean, God, God must take you from one level to another. When people look at you, they will say, this man is the blessed 
of the Lord. This woman is the blessed of the Lord. So receive it now in Jesus' name. I want you to understand 2023, we are kissing goodbye poverty in our lives. I, I, I want... I, I, I want you as a sign, as a prophetic symbol, I want you to wave at the air. Those who are saying, uh, say goodbye to poverty. I'm saying, say goodbye. Now no, no, say it goodbye, goodbye. Poverty, I'm telling you goodbye. I'm, I am telling you goodbye. 2023 is my year. No more poverty in my life. Poverty in the mind, it is going. Financially, poverty, it is going. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Last but not the least, I decree and declare that diverse and unprecedented testimonies of divine blessing shall break forth among PEFA members in Jesus' name. I say it, testimonies, unprecedented testimonies will back forth from this house like never before. Small testimonies, medium testimonies, big testimonies will back forth from this place like popcorn. Have, have you ever seen the way popcorns, uh, what happens? It just pop, 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 pop. Uh, when you are telling your brother a congratulation, before you finish the word congratulation, they turn to you and they are telling you congratulations. I mean, testimonies will be popping here like popcorns, pop, pop, pop. If you believe it's our hallelujah. I want to say this. Many times we are very conservative congregation. When God does things in our lives, we want to be quiet. But when you come for prayer, you come for prayer publicly. But when God does it, you want us to deal with it quietly. Now, this is a principle. If it is a public sin, you must rebuke it where? Publicly. If it is a quiet sin, you, you rebuke it where? Privately. So if you came here for prayer publicly, why are you finding it difficult to come and give your testimony publicly? Now, the Lord told me, when we don't testify, it is an aspect of pride. Pride has invaded your home. The reason why Satan was cast from hell or from heaven was because of what? Pride. Now, watch this. When you don't testify, you are telling the whole world that I did it by my own strength. But when you testify, you are telling the whole world, it is not by my strength. It took the hand and the grace of God to do this thing for me. And what that does is this. It builds faith and confidence in the lives of your brethren. If God can do it for my brother, I am definitely next online. So I decree and declare the spirit of fear and the spirit of pride. May it be broken in Jesus' name. We are believing God this year that we will have testimonies, big testimonies that will shock and amaze people all to the glory of God. And that's why I want to challenge somebody today to believe God for business expansion. I'm challenging somebody today to believe God for absolute restoration, whatever that means to you. That's why I'm challenging somebody here to believe God for supernatural abundance. That's why I'm challenging somebody today to believe God for supernatural promotion. Listen to me. Some of you, you will not get one promotion of one grade. No. It must be big so that you will know it is not your head. God will give you, uh, it is double. I mean, instead of one grade, they give you two grades higher or three grades higher. And people will wonder, who do you know? You will realize it is not, my, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of God. So I challenge somebody here today, believe God for supernatural abundance. Believe God for governmental appointments. 
I said believe God for governmental appointments. Let me ask you, who are these people who are being appointed? Are they animals? They are people like you and me. If they can be appointed, why can God appoint you? I am declaring and I'm believing God that in this congregation, we will have people who will be governmentally appointed in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I said receive it now in the name of Jesus. I said receive it now in the name of Jesus. Believe God for supernatural connections. What you need is not money. There are places where money cannot help you. What you need is a connection. Just a connection, and it will change your life. Just a connection in the right place, it will change your life. There's a friend of mine who got a connection, not money. The business guy. And he got a note from a, a very prominent guy. And he went and said, go and give this person all the goods he needs. If he does not pay, I am guarantee. It was not money that he was given. Power of a connection. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, may God give you a powerful connection that will change your life. I said, may God give you a powerful connection that will change your life. If you receive it, shout a bigger hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me give you a scripture. Psalms 119 verse 111 then revelation 12 11 and then joel 2 25 everything that the locust has stolen away we are declaring this season ah the locust must vomit it back in jesus name last but not the least those who have caught cases the lord spoke to me and told me that the egyptian you see you will see them no more. So stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Psalms chapter 24 verse number 8 and Exodus chapter 14 verse 30. Now, I want to say this. When the prophetic word has been uttered, many of us, we go back home and we sit down. That's where we miss it. When you look at Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, Daniel says that the prince of Persia kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. 21 days. Now watch this. In the spiritual, what I have declared has already been released. But you must push in prayer until you see the manifestation of that prophetic word. Because if you don't do that, the prince of Persia will detain your blessing. So there is work for you to do. The problem is not the prophet. The prophet has already done his work. Now the, the onus is now on you to do what? To battle. That's what I loved, what our father said. We have to battle. So we must battle until we see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Not this week. We are giving you this week time for you to bond with your family. But next week, we will be here for prayer. We will be engaging in spiritual warfare, calling the things that are not as though they are until we see the manifestation. Why? Because it is a new season for us. Receive God's word now in Jesus' name.